Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horseman Channel today. Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, my name is Daniel. I own a 2013 Shelby, and on this channel, we love everything horsepower related. So here's my 2013 Shelby. Woo. She's, a little, she's a little dusty, but still love it. And today, we're gonna take it on a little cruise. And while we're on this cruise, I'm gonna go ahead and basically talk about the horsepower limits of Shelby GT500s, as well as Coyote Mustangs uh, generations one through three. Um, I'm not an expert by any means, but let's go ahead and get into it and we'll go from there. Ladies and gentlemen, so um, I'm kind of cruising to the uh, gas station here. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to answer a question that I get a lot of times from some of my uh, fellow car enthusiasts and just friends and everything. Um, but the question I get a lot is, what's the horsepower limit of the GT500s? Um, whether it be 5.4 or 5.8, as well as, you know, they'll ask me to, and versus like the Coyotes, whether it's Gen 1, 2, or 3. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to answer what I what I know. Doesn't mean I'm an expert by any means, um, but we'll kind of go from there. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right in. So first things first, uh, I guess we'll start off with the Coyotes. Um, Coyote coming back, uh, I believe I believe it was 2010 um, with the first gen uh, 5.0 again. Um, I believe it might have been 2011, but I think it's 2010. And the Gen 1 Coyote cars. Um, changed the name of the game really um as far as uh you know the, the new technology and what they could do because when that 5.0 came out as the first 5.0 that was you know dual overhead cam uh kind of had the background and uh, of like what the svt cobra did in 0304 four valve motor uh three a 302 cubic inch but yeah so anyways as far as the limits of that car I would probably, you know, from what I've seen on forums and just read about and, you know, seen videos on, the Gen 1 cars seem to be around 650 horse is kind of like the reliable uh, number. Um, I'm not saying that Coyote cars out there haven't got 700, 800 um, uh, on the Gen 1s, but I'm talking, when I say limits, my definition of limit is, you know, that's still going to be reliable for a couple of years. You can, you can uh, you know, put the floor or put the pedal to the floor, have fun with it a few times out and, you know, uh, when you're out on the town and not have to worry about it, you know. Um, and it still, you know, can take a pretty good beating. So in my opinion, what I've seen, the Gen 1 Coyote is about 650 horse. Um, and that's kind of their comfortable limit um, going from there. Uh, now, moving on to Gen 2, they, they kind of adopt adopted a lot of parts from the Boss 302 Mustang, which was like, I believe, better, better rods, uh, just better internals generally. And I've seen Gen 2 Coyotes, you know, handle 800 horse uh, pretty comfortably. Um, and, you know, it's just, they're just better, better built, better internals. Um, and I believe the Gen 3s are, are kind of similar. Uh, don't hold me to that. But I do know now going back, I gotta sorry, I gotta recap here for a second. Going back to Gen 1, I do know that in 2014, I believe they got a sleeved motor versus the uh, 2013 did not have a sleeved motor. So um, that kind of uh, also, so if you get a 2014 Gen 1, it's a little bit better in my opinion than uh, the first couple of years of Gen 1. So, but anyways, yeah. So that's kind as far as the Coyotes go, uh, the Gen 2 and up, usually 800 plus. 
if I had a Coyote Gen 2 um, that was just stock internals, I'd probably say 850, 800, 850, and I would feel that's probably where that, that'd be as comfortable or as high as I would go comfortably, to where it'd still be reliable and everything. All right. Um, now, boost applications, that's different. That's probably going to be a different video where I can go over, you know, boost as far as what's more efficient with uh, horsepower and how you can reach those goals easier, whether it be a, a positive displacement blower or, you know, centrifugal blower or turbo or whatever. We'll go from there. But I'm just talking about limits of horsepower for right now. Um, anyways, now moving on to the Shelby cars. Um, uh, you know, going back from 2000, the, the newer Shelby's 2000, and I believe it was seven to 2014. Uh, all those cars, you know, 2007 to 2012 was the 5.4, and uh, the 5.4 got revised in 2011 with the all aluminum block. Um, but uh, just going off of limits for these cars for horsepower limits, um, they are comfortably, from what I can tell. About 800 horse. Um, it's funny because the 5.4 and the 5.8, yes, the 5.8 uh, makes more horsepower from the factory. Obviously, it's going to more displacement. But as far as the horsepower limit of the engine seems to be pretty much the same as the 5.4. Around 800 horse, comfortably and reliable. That you know, it's going to be okay as long as you're running 85 and you know you got a good tuner. I think you should be com comfortable around 800 horse. Uh, my car personally, once I get to the upper sevens, if I knock on 800's door, you know, that's fine. But I'm I'm actually kind of more comfortable in like 770, 780, just slightly under eight, and I'll be happy and more comfortable since it's not a built motor yet. But yeah, that's for the GT500s. They're just, you know, different animal. They don't rev as high as the Coyotes. Um, they got gobs more torque. Uh, they're torque monsters. The, the SVT motors are definitely, torque is where it's at for those cars um but uh yeah they just don't rev as high as the uh coyote cars do um and gen 2 coyote and up they can just handle a lot of power they really can don't get me wrong you do a built 5.8 or built 5.4 versus the built a built coyote i mean my money's gonna be on the built bigger uh displacement motor it's just you know there's no replacement for displacement so but we're not talking about that we're just talking about from the factory so um that's what I've known is about an 800 horse. Uh, I've seen people hit nine and stuff like that, but once again, how long is it gonna last on 900 horse? And don't get me wrong, an engine can blow up at any horsepower if it's got a bad tune in it. But um, I've just noticed that it seems to be 800 horse is like kind of the sweet spot for the GT500s, whether it be 5.4 or 5.8. Um, by all means, in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong. If I've missed things, please put in there. I'm not saying I'm an expert, like I said, by any means. This is just the knowledge that I've picked up and that I wanted to share with anybody else who, um, you know, might not might not know, know it all. So, uh, but yeah, I'm just, uh, if there's anything in the comments or if it, anything that I've missed, by all means, put it in the comments um, and we can kind of go from there. Um, so I guess I could talk a little bit about the boost uh, applications. Um, now, all the numbers I've said for Coyotes as well as uh, GT500 engines, um, like I said, I'll say it again, uh, the numbers that I'm saying are from what I've seen that people do and still are daily drivers and it's, you know, it handles the power well. Um, I know people out there make a thousand horsepower on stock internals on Gen 2 and 3 Coyote engines, but to me, that's kind of on borrowed time. So, um, you're just ragging it out pretty hard. But anyways, uh, going back to boost stuff, um, uh, boost in my, opinion, in my opinion plays a part as far as what's harder on the engine, uh, what's more efficient. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, that might have to be another video only because it's, I could go into a long spiel about all the different, you know, pros and cons of this boost application versus boost application. Um, and what might be harder on a motor, uh, what might be easier on a motor while making the higher, the higher power that you want to make. So I'll probably put a different video out for that and we'll go from there. But as far as the other, uh, what I've mentioned already, uh, by all means, please put in the comments uh, what you guys think. If you want me to do another video on boost applications, by all means, let me know. Um, I always, as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, please like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Um, and 
until then, as always, guys, tell me what's in your staples. You have a good one, and thanks for watching.